happy Monday because I've decided to start putting these out on Monday. It makes more sense. Get that out at the beginning of the week. Can reference it for all other things and it just seemed to make more sense. So happy Monday to you. Um, I hope you are, well, I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you've got a great week planned. In this video, I'm sharing with you seven simple ways that you can improve your life. Hi, I'm Kerry Williams, and I'm a woman on a mission to help as many people as possible to uncover their passions and discover their life purpose. This is Dreamers, Setters and Go-Getters. Changing your life can be uh, a big scary thing, but if you have just tiny little things, it can make it a lot easier. Um, a book I've just finished reading is The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. It's all based around uh, making small little changes to your life that you do on a consistent basis that uh, create big change in the end over a, a com compounded change, hence the name. Hang on, I've got it here, it's going to be back to front. Sorry, I appreciate it's back to front, the compound effect. Um, on that note, I haven't mentioned it before, I might have done. Um, my big news resolution this year was to, in fact, do you know what, I got about goals. I don't think I've actually shared what mine was. My news resolution this year is that I'm going to read a book a week in 2023. Um, so this, the first week was The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy, which when this video goes out, I would have actually finished reading it, which yeah, I know I should have finished reading it, but I'm used to audiobooks or Kindle books, and this was like a hard copy book, so I need to, no, so I need to um, f find the right light to watch it in, and uh, in this house, particularly in, in winter, it's, it's so dark, um, and we have lamps, but the lamps aren't always in the right position for me being able to read something. So um, I struggle with that a little bit. Um, so I'm kind of doubling up. I should have finished that book. I'm listening to another audiobook at the same time, which is my second one, which is She Builds by Jada Selner. Um, I first came across Jada on the, in the Female Entrepreneur Association, which I'm a member of. Um, and she did a video on there and I thought she was awesome. And she um, said about her book on there. And I thought, right, well, that's what I'm going to check out. And it's awesome. It's worth reading or listening to so far i haven't finished it uh the compound effect is also great uh it's it is one of those typical white middle class male american authors where he name drops he pretty much points out how freaking awesome he is the whole way through and if if you're like me and you find that quite tedious to read you may struggle but the content itself is very good, very, very worth reading. Just trying to bypass his, I'm so wonderful, look how rich and famous and look what my famous friends are. Um, then you'll, um, you should enjoy it. It does start off by saying how um, strict a regime, um, a strict a person his dad was in the sense of regime and pushing motivation from a very young age and getting into habits. And so um, I, I you, and again, he is a, a, a middle class white male in America, so he is going to have it a lot easier than the majority of the world. But um, he, he still has some very, very good points. Some things that I've already started to implement in my life and it is improving. I've now got this regular routine every day where I attempt, I attempt, I'm not saying I'm succeeding at it. I attempt to read the book I'm reading at the moment for an hour every morning. I'm not a morning person. I'm most definitely a night owl. So um, I obviously have to get up anyway to do the school run. But um, if I had it my way, I would come home and go back to bed, which I do sometimes because I just don't do well first thing in the morning. I don't go to sleep very well at night, but that's probably because I go back to bed. Um, so getting up and reading a book that early is proving to be a challenge, but I'm going to keep persisting at it. And then hopefully if I start doing that, getting up earlier, getting into a routine of doing things earlier in the day, hopefully I'll fall asleep better at night and then we'll be able to get up earlier in the morning. I don't know why, I, I mean, I don't know if that's going to be right. My chronotype is more night owl. I don't think I'm exclusively night owl, but I'm definitely a much later on in the day. Sorry, I go that way. Um, no worries, much later on the day person. So we shall see how we go. Anyway, where was I? Oh yes, seven changes in your life. Right, so change number one, spend more time with your friends and family. I'm quite introverted. I know a lot of people are quite introverted. Um, going out and socialising can be a bit of a challenge at times. But when I do, when I actually go, do you know what? I'm going to give this a go. Um, I actually do feel a lot better 
I do feel a lot happier. I feel more positive in myself. Um, there's knowing I have people in my life that I that love spending time with me as much as I love spending time with them. I, I like spending time with my family. I like, as in obviously my husband, and my children, but I like spending time with my parents and sort of that side of things, like my brother and his wife and their kids and things like that. I really enjoy, oh my nan. Um, I really enjoy spending quality time with them. We like playing card games a lot. Um, and that's something that we've all shared and we all love doing quiz games, board games, that sort of thing. Games nights in general, quiz nights in general, even Zoom ones are awesome. And I do feel so much better when I've done that. I think when you're around people who know you and love you and you know them so well and you love them so well, so much, you can relax so much more. And I think it's an important part of self-care and relaxation to spend some quality time with the people you love doing something fun as opposed to being with them because you've got to be with them for whatever reason. But actually doing it on the purpose of doing something fun. So I really recommend, even if you don't live too close to your family, doing quiz nights through Zoom or Google Meet or uh, Skype or any of the other ones. Um, uh, what's it called? Jackbox is really, really good. I really love Come back on. Um, do through, through through Jackbox. That's really good fun. Um, you can get it on Steam, so you can obviously share the screen on your laptop. Um, obviously, written quizzes is good fun. But you can even do things like sort of movie nights and stuff like that now. You can have links through to. I'm sure Netflix has got one, but I know Disney Plus definitely has one. A watch along feature on there, so you can watch a film with someone, but an entirely different house, entirely different freaking country. To be fair, I've got friends in um america that we have watched we watched uh, a couple of years back not this year just gone but uh the year before we watched the eurovision song contest live with them and uh a little harder for them to do because they're in the us and they don't have the feed quite as straightforward as we do but uh yeah we watched that at the same time and that was really good fun we had our friends um in the uk with us and then our friends in and then one year we actually did new year's eve i think it was 2020 new year's eve because obviously everything was on lockdown, you can go out. We did a, um, a a virtual New Year's Eve party, and we had, I said, our friends there from um, um, from America. Uh, we had friends in Canada that joined the call. That was great because we weren't expecting to see them, so that was really cool. I hadn't seen them in a while, um, and oh, it's such a so much. There's so many of us, and it's just a really, really great way to reconnect with people spend time with people who are you know, like-minded people because a lot of times your friends are like-minded people you just catch up with stuff like that so yeah number one change is to spend more time with your friends and family change number two learn a new skill or hobby i can't stress this enough this is an entire part of my ethos for finding your passions and purpose is to find new hobbies new skills anything you are remotely interested in check it out I discussed this in another video, so you can go back to to one of my previous videos. Um, I'll I'll link it. I'll link it here for you because I can't specifically remember which one it was. But I said about the importance. I, I went back to how I I ended up doing what I'm doing now, and it was something that I had never ever considered in my life before. And now three years later, I think it is, and it's uh, my my entire life is based around it. So um, all because I took a slight interest in something. Now. You don't have to enrol in expensive courses or anything like that or go join expensive clubs. You can do things simply by watching YouTube videos. I can guarantee you, whatever you're interested in, there's a YouTube video for it. Or you could um, join something like Skillshare, where I think to a certain degree it's free. I don't think it's entirely free. I could be wrong. But um, there's just online courses you can find that are for free on things. The internet is just an absolute plethora of just lo Ooh, weird little squeaky noise um, of information on various different topics. Netflix have usually got documentaries on things. So just check out one of those things. Give it a go. See what you can find out. Number three. Once again, prioritise self-care and rest. I cannot stress this enough. I kid you not. I swear I actually need about 10 hours sleep every night. I didn't necessarily get it, but... I do make sleep a priority. If I don't get enough sleep at night, I'll go and have a nap. I, I take no shame in going for a nap. I need rest. My brain needs to rest. I'm getting old. <laughs> I'm not. 
podcast we're all getting old but not that old that I need to sleep all the time um but scheduling that time for self-care and rest is so important to you. I'm going to say it one more time. This is the only body and the only mind you are ever going to have. So look after them. You look after them, they will look after you. It's, it's quite a package deal, to be fair. And um, you just feel better when you look after yourself. There is nothing worse than feeling like you are working, working, working with absolutely no play, no rest time, no time to enjoy yourself. Because quite frankly, that is not life. That is not living. That is not realistic. But yeah, that's number three make sure you prioritize self-care and relaxation change four much like change two find a passion and pursue it again passions start with interests the dog's going to come up again coming up all right passions start out as minor interests you can just try something out see how it goes and before you long you find that actually it clicks you really love it it's really enjoyable and you um it becomes an absolute obsession, it becomes a passion, it becomes a joy to do. Um, so I would recommend finding something like that because it does make your life more worth living. It makes your life so much more enjoyable. So yeah, find a passion and pursue it. Number five, this is a really important one regarding your boundaries in general as a person. Say no when needed. You were not put on this earth to constantly make another person happy. That wasn't your sole purpose. Yes, it's nice to make other people happy, but on terms that, in mutual terms, there are people that manipulate you out there that will make you feel bad because you aren't doing things their way. You're not doing what they want all the time and they make you feel like a bad person for doing it. It's rubbish. Once again, this is your life. You're living it too. You're living, in fact, you're the only person living this life. I don't know what I'm talking about, but other people can sort their own stuff. Now, there are obvious situations here where you will need to say yes, even if you, you maybe want to say no because you have absolutely no choice in the matter. For example, if a family member gets taken ill or something like that, um, you will obviously have to say yes regardless of the situation. But to be fair, I don't think you'd want to say no in those situations. But um, yeah, there are people who just want, want, want from you all the time and will take, take, take without giving anything back you need to probably get rid of them they're pretty toxic people i've had people in my life like that in the past i've just pretty much just ghosted them eventually i've just rid them from my life because i don't want to be treated like a bad person just because i'm constantly working on making their life better i want to be a bad if so if i'm going to be seen as a bad person i want it to be because i'm a bad person not just because someone's acting like i am so um it's just so important for your mental health and your boundaries to say no when you don't want to do something. Don't be a yes person all the time. Say yes to the good opportunities and your gut will tell you what they are. So that's number five. Say no. Change six. Smile more often. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. It's not always that simple, but actually it is. Just doing this is actually quite easy. Just do it. What's the expression? That it's I, I I feel weird. I feel like at the end of Toy Story 2 when they're talking to Dean, the Barbie, and she gets to the end and she goes, oh, my face is killing me. <laughs> Bizarrely, despite the fact I've, I've noticed I don't smile very much on these videos, especially when I'm breaking them down into the short form videos for like TikTok and Reels. <laughs> I'm trying to get a still of me smiling. I'm just going to keep doing this the whole video. Um, and my God, I look miserable. And I'm, not, I'm actually a really smiley person. I work in a bar and anybody that comes into the bar, I doubt they'd be saying that I'm the, the miserable one. I am smiley smiley all the time. Um, and that's because um, if you smile, you're basically faking it till you're making it. Even if you're in a bad mood, if you smile, you will start to feel better. It's just the natural way this works. I don't really understand the science of it, but I know from experience it really does work. You smile more often, your day will improve. Fake it till you make it, smile more often. And finally, change number seven. Um, this is a really cliched one, but uh, practice gratitude. You will not believe how awesome your life is until you sit and you actually acknowledge all the good things in it. It's very easy to moan and whinge and whine about all the bad things in your life. And get don't get me wrong, you could have some really, really awful stuff going on. 
but I doubt it will be awful stuff all the time. And despite all the awful stuff, there'll be some amazing things in your life. Amazing people, amazing experiences, amazing places you go, things you see, people you meet. Your life is awesome. And once you stop to smell the roses and take gratitude for different things, it just transforms your life. I used to be such a miserable, miserable person, always seeing the worst in everything. OK, so didn't help that I watched the news and read newspapers back then. They do not help. And once I cut that out of my life, that really that should be number eight. Stop reading newspapers and watching the news. And that includes going on websites for news. They are miserable. But anyway, gratitude. When I started actually acknowledging all the good things in my life, things actually got better. When you start seeing the good things, again, that's the dog being weird. When you start seeing the good things, all of a sudden, it's like law of attraction. Better things start appearing into your life because your mind has started to focus on them. When your mind starts to focus, it sees things more. So practice gratitude. And that's it. That is my seven small changes you can make in your life to basically make your life better. I hope you've enjoyed that video. I hope you have an amazing week. Uh, and I will see you next Monday for another video. Don't forget, if you haven't signed up, my work, my free workshop, Almost an App in 2023, is still going every single Monday at 7pm UK time, 2pm Eastern time. And I think it's about 11am uh, Pacific time. Sign up to there if you want some mo extra motivation, extra encouragement and some uh, ideas on goal setting and how to achieve your goals and how to stay motivated. I'm trying to speak very quickly because the dog's about to go mental, I think. So, as I said, have an amazing week. I'll see you next Monday.